All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. It's the Masters Coliseum 7, a $42,000 tournament, and matching each other early on in the Swiss rounds of the tournament. It's not an elimination round. It's just a best of three in the Swiss bracket to see who gets through to that playoffs. Basilisk Serral in the bottom right side. Maru for on side in the top left. Both players uh, with good records so far in the tournament. And Maru is going to go for the two racks Reaper Warloff into Expand. It's a tried, tested, and true, very standard build order. Serral has mined 100 gas very early, though. Oh, he's forgotten to start Link Speed. There we go. It does start it just a second or two late. Not a big deal. But he actually pulled off minerals onto gas to do that, did Serral, because he wants to get that Link Speed. And look at this. He's hiding a drone over here. So we can come in behind the Reaper and start that third hatchery. Now, looks like Maru's only going for three Reapers, guys. Oh, he gets a drone. Serral a bit slow on the spore block there. Does lose that drone. Great start for Maru. Get out of here, Reapers. Serral says, leave my babies alone. Oh, that's a Zergman kill. Nice. Oh! Oh, Serral! Oh, no. Oh, God. Serral woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. What is going on, guys? That was a disastrous early game defense for Serral. Losing two drones and a Zergling? Like, that's just unnecessary. He's already pinned on two bases. Wait, where does other drone go as well? Looks like he sent his other drone home. He didn't end up going for the third base. I thought he'd move it down to the left and take this third, but... Serral is sitting on two base. He's also building lings. His droning is very slow right now. He has three lava sitting idle. Plenty of money to spend it, and he's not spending it. Is this Serral, or did Dark inhabit his body? Interesting to see. <laughs> Maru, on the other hand, that first grenade was pixel perfect to stop that drone from, uh, from actually being able to do anything. 3cc opening, very economic behind it. Maru, happy to play a macro game. Oh, unfortunately, he was not expecting ling speed quite so early. Good micro with his Reapers, but uh, Serral will clean all of those bad boys up. Units lost tab will be in favor of Serral, but you got to realize having his third delayed this long, only starting it at 3 minutes 40, and uh, losing, you know, those drones early as well. It hurts. He's only up five workers, and there's a third command center finished when the third hatchery is just starting. He's going to lose an Overlord as well. Oh, man. Maru doing a very, like, Standard, just well executed double racks three reaper opening, getting a third command center, getting a double engineering bay. And Serral's uh, making more mistakes than I'm used to. This is where Serral needs to grit his teeth. I think Serral's so used to getting like all in by Maru and Maru trying all these weird openings. It's refreshing for us as the fans to see Maru willing to engage Serral in a macro game because this is just light pressures into macro, super fast upgrades, very bomber esque there. Factory goes down behind that, and we will see three more barracks in the near future. But of course, non-stop SCV production is the name of the game for now. Double Evo Chamber goes down for Serral pretty early, 4 minutes 40, but nothing compared to how fast those engineering bays are for Terra. That's going to be like a 45 second upgrade lead at least for Maru. And uh, what a great way to start this game. Serral is in the worker lead, but only by a little bit. As, as a Zerg, when they play this greedy, you know Terran's economy and production will explode around the seven minute mark where there's just going to be like three bases full of workers, five barracks, pumping marines, medevacs, all that stuff. So I think what I'd really like to see uh, for Serral is him getting to 70 workers before the aggression starts. If he doesn't get to 70 workers before Maru's getting him locked in Ling production, it's going to be tough to keep pace. And interestingly, Maru splits his army. Is that a mistake, guys? It looks like it was maybe a mistake. I'm not sure. Ling sees a third command center float down. His overlord had already scouted it in the main, so it's not like losing his overlord was the worst thing. Armory, very well timed. And indeed, the upgrade difference is 50 seconds, guys. 50 seconds! Fourth and fifth barracks are building up behind the natural as well. Medivacs, the first medevac starting here at, at 550. Maru's a little gas starved. He's just put up onto four gases. He needs to queue that second medevac, and he realizes it, starts it straight away. So starting his two medevacs pre-six minutes... Serral only on 56 workers. His fourth hatchery is building. He's already in mass ling production, though. Ooh, that's not good for Serral. Remember I was saying we wanted him to get to 70 workers before he really was just massing army? He's on 57, and he's massing army, which means Serral is going to need to swarm the first push out. Now, to be fair, a lot of Terrans, they'll push out with two medevacs and, like, 35 marines. And obviously, you can only save 16 of those Marines. So if there's enough Ling Bane to surround that, that could be pretty huge. Looks like he wants to intercept the rally with a handful of Zerglings. Maybe pick off Combat Shields, but Combat Shields is already done. About three Marines, it's going to be a nice start. 
These Marines at the front looking for the Overlord. It tries to hide to the left. It does go down. These Lings get another wraparound. Maru! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, wait. Never mind. Apparently those Marines with their combat shields barely surviving there. Plus two attack does start for Maru behind us. His five barracks are now pumping away. Marines on the front line fended off by the Queenling Bane. Cyril took a good fight there. However, keep in mind he's barely up in workers and a fourth command center has started. Fourth command center plus two armor as well. Baneling speed only now beginning. And of course, the 1-1 one -one has finished for Cyril. If he can afford that carapace, that'd be huge. Oh, I like this sneaky Baneling morph attempt there, but unable to get it in. At least he hadn't started morphing the Banelings. And actually, he does find the SCV on the command center. A moment of inattention for Maru, costing him quite a lot of build time on that base. Sends a new SCV over. Second factory is on the way. Double drop on the right side. Picks up and pulls back. Serral has limped his way to 70 drones. He's got decent creep spread, but nothing to write home about. This is not some Raynor-esque creep spread. He's only up five workers still. And so the next fight still matter. There is no ability to be wasteful here. Maru dropping on top of those Zerglings. Kind of dodge. Serral is down 400 minerals in the resources lost. Not too bad with how this game started. But he is going to need to either expand that worker advantage massively or get better trades. <laughs> and out trading Maru. He's got a fourth command center finish. You're only on 73 workers against 70 SCVs. It's a scary situation to be in. Maru has not given up an inch of his lead in this game. And he's going to continue now with the bio mine pressure. Six mines in Marauder, 39 Marines. No concussive shells just yet, but no doubt as his extra three barracks finish. And he goes to eight barracks, two factory production. We'll see that come in. Drilling Claws also has not been made yet in this game. Some Zergans getting ready on the right side. We're going to maybe try and deny that base, but there are a few Marines ready. Oh, here we go, Marine Medivac. He does save most of the Marines. Decent Widow Mine hits, nothing too crazy. And the Zergans will surround a few Marines on that base as well. Units Lost Tab still pretty good here, even though that fight looks okay for Serral. Serral's still only at 80 workers. He's, he's basically just going to try to max out and defend and hang on. If Maru can keep forcing this level of trading... He is marching towards victory, and it is on Serral to do something about it. Serral is the one who has to break the gridlock and find some damage. Lings are going to roll into that base. Unfortunately, Serral didn't click them close enough. There we go. They are going to go in and grab an SCV or two before the planetary finishes. Lingbane on the right side goes in, gets a few of those marines. Good spreadies from Serral. And he does set off a few of those widow mines. Drop goes by into the main base. Spore crawlers on that right side are lacking. That looks like five SCVs actually went down. Not too bad. Nonetheless, the worker count is still dead even with Maru about to overtake on the workers again. This is insane. He's, he's lost more SCVs than drones this game, and yet he's winning the eco war. Ling Bane do get on top and force that to pick up. The Hydra's now coming in again to help Serral out. On the left side, Marines come in. Ling Bane there. Beautiful spready from Maru. Does he have the numbers? There's not enough Zerglings. If you don't have enough Zerglings, you can't punish him for spreading like that. You need Zerglings to surround the Marines and Banelings to force them to spread. But if you end up too heavy on one or the other, too heavy on the Zerglings, the Marines clump up and focus the Banelings down. Too heavy on the Banelings, not enough on the Zerglings, and he will spread out and, and mitigate anything you can do. Maru has a supply advantage. He's looking for these trades. He's playing an excellent Bio vs. Zerg game right now. Great Widow Mine hits all across that spread. And he's got so many more Widow Mines to fall back on as well. That one fires just on the Overseer. Nice hot pickup. Saves most of the Marines. Leaves the Marauders on the ground. He's re-dropping into combat. Maru, Chad Gamer, with an almost 2 to 1 unit lost ratio. Give Maru an inch and he'll take a mile. It's so funny because I'm used to seeing Maru playing from behind against Serral and Raynor, or at best even into the mid game. It's one of the first times in a while we've seen him with a little bit of a lead from the early game. And he has made a little bit of a lead look unstoppable. Serral, every time he clears an army, there's a new army. There is non-stop Widowmine production. He has not missed a beat on that. Uh oh, Marine ambush. Okay, the Marines do get picked up before the Ling Bane can ambush them on the left side. Maru still maintaining presence on both sides of the map simultaneously. He's up five workers. He's mining more. He's got the mules. He's got the Ghost Academy, the double starport, the 3-3 on the way. Hive has only just started for Serral. Serral is in a losing battle right now. He's a bit too far behind the curve. That being said, it seems like the ratio of the units lost getting a bit better. But Serral only with a handful of Ling Bane and Novus here on the left. I don't think that's enough to defend this new push. And Maru... He does pull back on the right, but it's the left side, which now becomes the focal point. Liberate his mines and a permanently maxed out Terran with a bio mine spread coming on forwards. Serral thinking about sending more units. He sends a lot more Ling Bane and a handful of Hydras down here to help out with this. Watch out for that Widow Mine. Nice hot pickup at the last second. Continuing a 3,000 resource lost units advantage. Maru playing an excellent game. Serral has not found a way to put the pressure back on him. I mean... 
He doesn't really have the numbers to, but I feel like if you let Maru just push you like this, Maru's going to show you what Maru's made of, which is excellent, TVZ. If you get him with some Ling Bane run by his force him to react, maybe you can get some mistakes out of Maru. But right now, when Maru is dictating where and when the fights happen, it's like clockwork. Marauders up front, Marines spread backwards, Widow Mines fire. He does the hot pickups at the last second when he needs to, and he is forcing Serral to keep on fighting over and over again into bad situations. Permanently maxed out Terran. The bio draining those queens of energy. I do like the pullback. A little slow on the pullback, actually. Liberator's going to start to fall to the queens. That was Serral's first really good fight. Maru with a big screw up. His left army got cleaned up as well. That full medevac. He's going to lose it. He's going to lose it. One more hit. No, three hit points. That medevac gets out of there. Maru did overextend on that right side. The queens bought so much time with the mass transfuse. There's still seven queens, 12 hydras left. Serral in the supply lead for the first time in a while. Uh, hydra listed and overseer could pick off that widow mine, but it's scary to stay there when you're not necessarily watching that army. Plus three carapace and adrenal glands are on the way. Vipers plus two. So he's going to try and close the gap on the upgrades. The problem is, by the time he does that, we're going to have range liberators hitting the field. So right now we've got 3-3 three, three against 2-1, two, two upgrades for the Zerg. So Terran heavily favored there. Range libs are going to be a massive problem. We've seen mass lib wreck hydras in frontal fights. Vipers can abduct them out of siege mode, but there's only one Viper with a second about to pop. Whoa, Widow Mine's getting some good shots up front and center. Great Widow Mine hits there. And Liberator Bio spread on both sides of the map. Still 4,000 or 3,500 resources ahead of the units lost. Maru's had a bigger income all game. He doesn't need to trade better, and yet he is pushing forwards with the Bio. Ling Bane Hydra takes the watch there. He doesn't realize Maru's got a drop down there. That Widow Mine is going to spot Serral coming forward on the left flank. The rest of Maru's army is well positioned, though. Pushing in there is a risky proposition. Serral's going to go for it. Bailing's in the mineral line. Will get some pretty juicy hits. He gets at least a few SCVs, but look at that. The counterattack is smooth. Maru says, oh no, you killed 12 workers. Guess what? I'm still at 80. I was on over 90 workers. And he's rebuilding five more workers as well. Maru is playing this like TY. And he drops a Marauder to get an Infestor. Oh, slick plays by Maru. He knows the Infestors are kind of the comeback play that Serral loves. The Burrow and the Infestors on the way, but look at that. Medivac's getting shot down by Hydra's. Nice catch for Serral. Can he defend on the front? The Marines trying to pull back. The Marauders are there. There's not many Widow Mines this time. That Widow Mine on the left gets a good shot, though. Another Widow Mine or two are actually way back here in the rear with the gear. The Ghost, the Bio surviving. The Liberator in the back is still there. And it looks like Maru continuing to trade very well. 5,000 resource loss difference. Serral trying to take the bottom left base. No way of defending that. There's no Lurker, Dan. There's nothing else really here other than this Infestor. Maru scans that and he will see it, but one big fungal from behind. Definitely what Serral's looking for. The money is low enough for Maru that this could still work. Remember, Maru doesn't have the Iron Bank. He's only on four orbitals. This is not late game Clem with 10 orbitals. This is the, the modern Maru. The fungal does pop, but it only gets a few ghosts and marines. The pre-spread was too good. The Liberator gets pulled out of siege mode, though. Serral going for broke. Ling's on the left side, clearing up SCVs. The Liberator eventually clears it up, though. And it looks like, yeah, that Liberator, you get 11 SCVs, Maru's still on 72, and he's rebuilding them instantly. This is the weird thing, is Maru's just instantly rebuilding. Is Serral actually going to get back in this, though? I kind of feel for Maru, I feel like he's been, he's been winning all game, and yet he's not getting a bigger units lost tab. Serral is taking better and better fights the game goes on, and this is something I should be mentioning more, right? Normally the gap is... 20% minimum advantage for the Terran, often 40%. Sometimes we see Clem when he's winning a game with double. Maru hasn't been able to, like, abuse his momentum the way Clem does, where when he's ahead versus Serral, he's just, like, dropping the back, attacking three places at once. Maru's been a bit more methodical. And, of course, we know Maru. We saw him on camera wearing a sling recently. Uh, I don't know if it was for this tournament or for a different one. He had a sling on his arm. And we know he's had shoulder problems before on that mouse hand that sometimes flares up and sometimes is worse than others. So... APM-wise, I mean, he's playing at 435, uh, 330 average AP, oh, sorry, 435 average APM, which is insanely fast. He seems to be handling things well, but maybe not quite able to maintain the pace of, like, a Clem that just basically says, you can't look everywhere at once. Maru's a bit more like, I'm going to win on paper with the units and the positioning. Clem, Clem will try to win this with speed. I'm going to do it just with the strategy. Let's see what he does. Viper's coming in. Widow Mine goes to the right side. Liberator does get abducted. Ling Bane Hydra cascading through the left of the map. Great attack for Serral. Serral's got a bit of bank going for him now as well. And you know what, guys? There's no mass orbital. Without mass orbital, 
Cyril can actually trade like this for a while. Of course, the corner bases are going to be hard to defend, and he does need to try to, I would imagine, transfer a lot of workers to those corner bases. Really try to mine those out. Oh, a couple of Hydras do get sniped. Three Hydras have gone down this game. 18 Hydras, 64 Zergs, 13 Banelings, 2 Vipers. 8 more Banelings and Morphing. Cyril needs more Banelings, in my opinion. I think this army is so scary of Maru, and winning this next fight is so important. Oh, he never broke these rocks! Breaking those rocks, he needs to break those rocks or give up this base. He goes for the giving up of the base, uh, which is not a bad call. The Ling's going in for a counterattack again. These Libs and these Widow Mines are enacting attacks every time Serral goes for this sort of move. Widow Mine gets a decent shot. It does go down. Overseer gets sniped, though. 18 workers, not too bad. And the Lings do pull back. 19 workers, even. Actually, in the top right, will get scouted by the command center. Still rebuilding his workers for Maru. I don't know if that makes sense at this point. Because he's not invested in that, that mass orbital infrastructure. And I do worry for him a little bit. He's got 14 Liberators, though. Okay, this is actually interesting, guys. Do you need Corruptors at this point? Because Liberators can't shoot Corruptors when they're sieged up, right? That's that's why Corruptors are kind of the ultimate anti-lib unit. On the other hand, you've got four Vipers, three Infestors. A few Parasitic Bombs could be massive. Abducting eight of them out of siege mode could be massive. But if you just attack 21 Hydras into 14 Libs, those Libs are going to destroy you. So how that next fight happens is going to be massive. Oh god, Maru sees the Infestor. Serral, get out of there, bro. Serral, you do not want to be there. Not in turret range. This is what we're talking about. Look at this Lib spready. How do you fight this? Okay, Serral, show us some magic. I, I, I know Finnish people don't really like magicians, but you need to... Oh! 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 oh. Good baneling hit on that Widow Mine. I thought it would get even more there, but it was still pretty damn nice. Serral not noticing that Widow Mine. And oh, look at this! Maru has just denied three hatcheries in quick succession. The far right, the center, and now the bottom left. Serral is losing so much mining. And he's using this to add ship weapons, building armor, high sec auto tracking. Maru, a man who has a high sec drive, or at least he will in about a minute. He's going to move down and set up the libs and deny this base. Serral doesn't have an answer. Serral thinks about engaging. Where are his vipers? These are free lib kills. He cannot be letting these libs do this. Just abduct the libs and kill them all, man. He's going to do it. There we go. So he abducts some of them, but he doesn't want to get sniped or abducted. He gets a few of those libs. He needs to abduct more. Lings are in that base right now. Maru pushing in. Watch out for the EMPs. Abducts going down on one more lib. Microbial Shroud. He actually used Microbial Shroud to protect the Hydras from the lib attack. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Very cool. And he actually cleans up a lot of that army. Units lost to have those 6,000 resources in favor of Maru. The problem is Serral lost those three hatcheries. If Serral didn't lose those hatcheries, this sort of fight, killing all those liberators, would be so massive. But Maru's denied the top right as well. Maru's going to get this base. And you know what? He's got five orbitals now, so a little bit higher. He can drop mules there. He's got to be careful because obviously he needs mules for the fights. And watch out for that fungal boy. What? Oh, he scanned. Oh, he scanned just to see if there was army incoming. Seize the infester. Beautiful scan for Maru, who's on mass ghosts. 18 ghosts, four more building. It's almost pure ghost liberator for him, which is an interesting style. Not much marine marauder being built anymore. The ghosts are pretty tanky at 100 hit points. And they've got a pretty fantastic attack against Zerglings. Hydraling Bane rolling in this right side. Those Banelings could blow up the command center if he commits with everything, but he's not. He's backing away. Oh, the Hydras are blocking the Banelings. That's why he backed away. Okay, get out. Get out, Serral. Gotta be careful about overcommitting into these moves. Killing that base is not bad. Of course, an Orbital will replace it, but keeping Maru's income not that high. Income right now sucks for Serral, though. He's burning through this bank. He's been ahead for a while. If he can get a fungal on these ghosts, it's game over. Like, he'll need to chain it, of course, to kill them. But if he can get a few fungals, and maybe a parasitic bomb or two on the medevax as well to lower their healing ability would be great. Good SCV run by, gets a few more. Uh, Zerging run by, gets a few more SCVs. There's a planetary in the north, so it's pretty safe. Ling's on the left as well. Oh, great moves by Serral. Just tactical little maneuvers. Burrowing Zerglings where he can as well. Just going to keep circling around and looking for the openings. This orbital's kind of exposed. I like this move. Serral is going to catch him. Maru's a little out of position. He's not too far away, though. He seems to have sensed that he's coming from here. He saw him in the sensor tower, I think. Abducts on the libs. Only gets one of them, and then he pulls back before the EMP can land. Click the command center. Mar Serral needs to click the command center and get out. You cannot attack head, head on into those many ghosts. Surprisingly, he doesn't go for the, the, the command center. you got to realize he was risking getting sniped, and if he loses 10, 15 hydras there... 
Whew, he does not have the money to replace it. His income's back up above Maru's. The Infestor gets caught again. He just can't get those Infestors in the rear with the gear the way they want to. Ling's on the left side. Gonna ruin Maru's economy again. Oh no, Maru! Maru is a giant army, but he needs to crush the next fight. Wait, he does get a lot of drones. Serral a little bit sloppy at protecting his own economy right now as well. Yes, he forces the command center to lift. Burrows a few Zergings there. He's going to go for the third as well. Maru's economy. He's just leaving it a little bit too undefended right now. Luckily, he does do a lot of damage. 19 drones going down. Serral's also going to lose that top right base, which means these Zerglings... I mean, they're killing all the SCVs as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, this is going to get so weird because you're both getting up to like 150 army supply for Maru 140 for Serral. He's got more Hydras on the way. He's got 25 Hydras. Problem is those Hydras get stuck behind each other. I think he's going to need a crazy Bane Link out to deal with these ghosts. I actually think he needs like 60 Banelings or nothing will connect because there's just so much firepower from Maru. It's such a weird sound. I don't think I ever, I ever thought I'd be saying that. You need 60 Banelings to deal with the ghost, but he might need to do a Ragnarok. A few Marines find this hatchery. Serral a little slow to respond. He's going to lose the hatchery and some drones. Nice moves for Mr. Maru. Gets that one. Bottom left base is up. This base here is up. He's got a few mineral patches there. This base is mined out. Income is dropping for both sides. 42 workers and only a few. He's still got the five orbitals. Sora never killed any of those. Sora goes back in with Zerglings on the center base, finding SCVs, a lot of mining, but he's losing a base at the same time. There's a Raven in the mix now looking to hunt any Infestors. We know Infestors are going to be the problem in a low economy game. Lings are ravaging though, dude. Lings are ravaging. Wow, killing add-ons even on the barracks. But dude, you can't be losing this base at the same... Serral loses his bottom left. Serral! He's not protecting his economy. He he's getting damage done, but he's also just unable to protect any of his bases. I, I gotta be critical. I gotta say, why are both of these bases going down so easily? I think Serral, he's so afraid of that Masco's Lib Army. He needs to catch it. Oh, oh, the Infestor though. It needs to be out of Lib Zones. There's too many Lib Zones. Scan goes down. Maru knows there's gonna be an Infestor there. He keeps catching those Infestors. These 300 IQ scans are saving his bacon right now. Lings are in the back of the base, burrowing all over. Those ghosts will kill some of them. Few of them will survive outside of scan range. Serral trying to retake two hatcheries right now. He's got very little income. Two more Vipers are on the way, as well as an Infestor. Now, this is basically Mass Hydra Spellcaster. Serral is banking on landing Fungal on the ghosts and abducts on the Liberators. If he gets his Spellcasters EMP'd, he is fighting Mass Hydra versus Mass Ghost. Uh, let me explain how that goes. The ghost aims his rifle, and guess what? The front six ghosts don't get their attacks off because there's Lingbane Hydra shooting them. And the other 20 ghosts all one-shot 20 Hydras, and then Serral has a, has a sad face, and he types GG. You, you, you need the Banelings and the Infestors to counter those ghosts, or they will destroy the Hydras. It will not even be close. It will be a disgustingly one-sided affair. Three libs on the left coming in. Lingbane Hydra and Festa fight coming in. Here we go. Microbial Shroud's going down. Is he going to be able to land some Viper spells? The ducks on the libs are pretty nice. Hydra Link Bane rolling in anti armor missile. The Vipers go forward with the Blinding Clouds. The Microbial Shrouds are everywhere. So many Microbial Shrouds, but those Hydras got popped. Absolutely wrecked. Attacking into a little bit of a choke point there for Serral, and Maru annihilates him. I think the Microbial Shroud is a pretty good idea. I do like that he's using that for the Hydras against the Libs. But dude, Maru's Ghost Bio Count pulling back there, started stepping back his Libs. The Hydras and the Banes all got stuck on each other. When you play Hydra Bane, you need to come from two or three sides because otherwise those units do get stuck and that costs Serral big time. He does catch these Libs. I love this split off of Hydras. He's going to kill pretty much every SCV there. Only a couple escape. And the command center should be going down as well. Unfortunately, taking that fight on the right has cost him big time. He's got a base mining there. He's got a base mining there. Maru only has these mineral patches remaining. If that fight wasn't so awful, maybe Serral could get back into it. But what's he going to do? His Lings are rallying into their death. Queens are getting sniped. Ling Bane rolling in before the Hydras are even here. He does take out a pack of ghosts in the middle. But the Hydras are all stuck in the mineral line. He cannot deal with this army. Look at the spread. Look at the size. And you know, that Maru has played an excellent TVZ. He was ahead from the start, and we can definitely see the fact that this was so close tells us that if Serral had uh, a not bad early game, I actually think this would be really hard because this map's meant to be good for Terran. I guess you can argue as it goes on, it's not the worst for Zerg, but uh, definitely it's been one of those games where I'm looking at it and kind of going, going to myself, man, I don't know. 
it feels like this was a bit too hard for Mario to get in this position. And even now, he's still getting his, his ghost denied. That base is still mining. How many units? 13 Hydras, 3 Vipers, 1 Zergling. 3 more Hydras on the way. I just don't know if you can deal with an orbital floating over and dropping mules on a new base. Not to mention this bio ghost ball. And Infestor's trying to build. Where is that building? Up here in the top right. Drones are trying to hide in this main base. They're going to burrow there. Uh-oh. Burrowing in scan range, not their wisest decision. There is a single Hydralisk burrowed behind this mineral line. Two Marines waiting for him to pop out of the grass. <laughs> Zergling pops up. But those SCVs do take it out. Over on the right side. Oh, Hydra Viper comes in. Blinding clouds. Oh, the Hydras. The Hydras are going to win this fight, I think. Just barely, but is it enough? Five Hydras still alive. Oh, and then comes the Bio Ghost from the south. There comes the Bio Ghost from the south. GG. Well played. Maru with an excellent game one in this series. Kills two drones at the start and carries it forward from there. I've got to watch this big fight in this choke point on the right. Because this was the game deciding battle. Um, shout out to Maru, by the way, for denying so many bases before this moment. Okay, so his Vipers are lagging a little behind. It's a lot of Hydra Bane. Let's take a look at this fight in slow-mo. So we see a Fungal catch some of those units, and then we see Serral say, let's go for it, and he spams Microbial Shroud. Notice the EMP start landing on these Infestors. So the Vipers quickly pull back. Notice he pulls the Vipers back to avoid these EMPs, and then he's going to go forward and cast spells, which is good micro for Serral. The problem he's going to run into is these units are all kind of stuck behind each other, not doing anything. These units also kind of stuck behind each other. Just not a great spot to fight. If some of his army was coming from the left, if some of his army was coming from up here, I see this fight being potentially very good for him. But because he's kind of, his whole army stuck behind, even though his spellcaster usage was pretty good here, it definitely was one of those fights where you're like, oh, I don't know if that was good enough. So he abducts the liberators, or at least some of the liberators. But then the snipes are already landing, and that's the problem. The problem is you can already hear like eight snipes going down, and there's no there's no banelings getting on top of the ghosts to really interrupt the snipes. Except a few hydra attacks on the front. Just listen. And then there's a bra there's a gap in the snipes, but the, the, there's no damage being dealt by this army. They're all stuck behind each other on this ramp. Very bad fight angle. And I think Mass Hydra in general is a, a rather trash army. I actually think you want Mauling Bane in that army. I think mostly Banelings, because I think you want to be able to just roll over the Ghosts and the Marines and the Marauders. But because there were so many Libs, he felt he needed Mass Hydra. I truly feel any more than at most 25 Hydralisks is huge overkill. So I think that was a mistake for Serral. You guys let me know if you agree or not. Maru though, really good starter step back, good snipes, good EMPs, and the Mass Lib for forcing a very awkward composition out of Serral. Really well played. At the end of this game, the unit's last tab was looking really good for Maru. 14,000 resource difference in game one. All right, going game two. Serral's gone for a 15 hatchery, 15 pool in the bottom left of Solaris. And Maru going for a much more standard one racks opening. Interesting to see how this plays off. Does Serral go into just like third hatchery, ling speed, or do we see one of these roach openings? You know, this, I loved his two worker on gas roach opening. I think it's fantastic. Notice he's going to get that worker. He's, he triple stacks these drones to try to get an extra trip or two. He's going to send it to the natural now. So you see, he gets one extra trip of mining just to get five extra minerals. Then he goes to the natural and, uh, and then he rallies his next two drones onto gas, I believe. Right now there are, oh, he's messed up his worker saturation a little bit, I think. There we go. Fixes it up. Two on gas, one on the natural, and he should be rallying his next drones down to the expansion, which he is. Cool. Yeah, this is looking like the standard two gas, uh, two workers on gas build. Usually goes four queen into a roach warren, um, a fast, very fast lair on 44 supply, and from there he can play uh, two base roach ravager timing. He can go ultras, fast ultras. He beat Maru with that back on Neo Humanity a few months ago. Actually, that was I think that was Masters Coliseum six. I'm pretty sure we, he did that earlier in 2023. Oh, Spore Trick it. And he waits so long on that Spore Trick, but he got punished last game for doing that. He barely had enough money to do a Spore Trick on the, the other drone if he needed to. He does defend though. Third Queen is on the way. No, fourth Queen. Is that a mistake? What's he doing? Oh, he's trying to escort a drone to his third. Okay, so yeah, no, he's actually playing Ling Speed. So he is playing this more like a standard opening. He's not doing the old Roach build. He's moved away from it. He said, nah, I've done that too many times. The Terrans have figured out how to deal with it. Looks like the Lings came in. 
And they did force an SCV and a Marine down to help defend. Reaper's going to try and hunt these Zerglings down. <laughs> I'm like, Maru, come on, mate, wake up. Maru saw the Zerglings, but he moved away with a shift click, and then he, he realized and came back and does clean those up. Third command center is almost finished, so a very economic build for Maru. His second gas is a little late, so he's going for the quick star port, but this doesn't feel like a Banshee build. Feels like a Viking opening, right? Oh, and Serral with that Overlord in the back, man. Serral and Reyna always get this Overlord in your back door recently. They just poke in and they scout and they see everything that's up. It's very annoying. I do think we'll see a Viking just because of his gas count being so low. Ah, uh, maybe waiting for the 125 for the Lib. Okay. There we go. Liberator does start up. Two aliens and a Reaper coming through the middle of the map. 16 Zerglings. Serral is planning to either surround the early aliens or to do a Ling run by... Looks like the Marines will take this Overlord out. That Overlord's trying to get a pixel-perfect hiding spot. I don't think it exists. Not on this map. It's going to fertilize those plants on the right side of this map next to the beach. A little bit of fertilizer in there. Yum, yum. All right, Ling's going across. This was a total of 22 Zerglings built by Serral. He's going up to seven Queens. Mass Drone's coming out behind this. If he can get the aliens to dive in, that could be big now. I know Clem is really good at defending this. Oh, if he can surround these Hellions. Maru, Maru, how's your reaction speed? Maru! Maru looks back very quickly, but he doesn't actually micro the Hellions that fast. And they will both go down. Oof, he has to raise the wall to not let them inside. The Liberator does siege up. It's actually pretty nice because it defends the SCVs pretty well. Three SCVs go down. I mean, you got a, couple, a few Hellions, a few Marines. It's not a bad trade getting those Hellions and Marines, but... Not the massive damage he was hoping for. Of course, Serral now knows there's a Liberator coming, so it'd be kind of silly if he got caught without a Spore Crawler at his main base. He's going to build it now. He's building it at the last possible second, really trying to push his greed. No Spore in the third or the natural, because he figures, hey, my Queen's are nearby. They can just respond to that. Now, does that Spore Crawler being so late punish him? Because the Lib will fly past without taking any hits now. At least it'll be ready soon enough. Serral's in position. He knows it's coming. And Maru not willing to waste hit points flying past a queen. Fourth hatchery starts just past five minutes. That's going to be very good for pushing his economic position. And meanwhile, going up to five barracks. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way for Maru. Maru's only on two gases mining. This is a mistake. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big one, but there we go. Puts on the, puts on the gas. Starts taking the fourth gas. Don't get me wrong. Minerals are the most important thing, so it's okay to be slightly behind on your gas. It's, it's obviously worse to, say, miss SCV production or... You know, not be able to afford uh, building units at all by being supply blocked. So he is prioritizing the more important things, but he was just a little late on putting on that third gas and taking the fourth. Uh, as long as it doesn't delay any really important upgrades, it should be fine. But especially since he's building siege tanks, he's now going to struggle to afford a mixture of combat shields, medevacs, and siege tank production all at the same time. Not to mention, in about 30 seconds, he wants to start an armory, and that's another 100 gas as well. So whenever you're going Widow Mines, it's a little bit easier to be low on gas. But when you're going for those Siege Tanks, the extra 125 gas per tank really adds up. Liberator Queen going to easy deal with that Liberator. Nicely done by, by Serral. Queen's in the middle of the map fighting the Hellion Reaper as well, pushing them back. 55 workers for Maru. Maru does not have a 4th and 5th reactor. Is that on purpose? Maru's going for a committed two tank push. Oh, Maru's doing it. We don't, dude. This is a 2018 build. This is like what every Terran tried to kill Serra with in 2018 and could never do. It's it's an old school, very aggressive push. Now he builds the reactors, but it's it's two medevacs, 20 marines, two siege tanks, one one in combat shields, all finishing in about 30 seconds, and he's going to go for Serra's fourth. Now Serra has a fifth on the rich gas base up top, but he's got to watch out. Those Hellions might try to run in there. Serral sees them. If he could surround those aliens, that would be great. I'm surprised he doesn't just surround them, because he's got way too much Ling Bane up here right now. Dude, he's going to let these tanks and libs take an amazing position. The lib's going to be part of this push. There's a tank, a, a bunch of marines. He's going to put the tank in that little corner. Nice. Nice positioning for Maru. Serral immediately pulling back there. He's like, oh god, oh god, oh god. i got to deal with this. Bane Ling speed is finished. He's got Baneling speed, but his Banelings, remember, they morphed on the top side of the map. They're just rallying down here now. Hatchery's taking a lot of damage. Queens will come forward. They're going to try and take the Siege Tank shots. Trying to bide his time, but 1-1 one, one is still 30 seconds away. serral has got to break it now. And he's going for it. Great surround of the Ling Bane. The tanks go down. The Queens will have to chase off creep for the Libs, but a lot of Queens falling. Oof. 
And here we go. Marines redropping those queens are off creep. That's always a problem. Oh god, the queen's in the open. The queen's in the open. Almost all of his queens have gone down. The Lings get a big surround, but the Bailing focus fire is legit. Maru playing like Bian. He takes a Bailing to the face, but he tanks it like a champ. The Marines are gunning down several Zerglings. Oh, Chad Gamer timing attack. This is exactly what Maru did versus Dark in their grand finals of the GSL last year. I think it was season one or season two of GSL where they played in the finals. And Maru was doing all these weird things where he'd just like skip add-ons, get a few more Marines, and just commit really hard to a three-base timing. And then, and then macro behind it. Like, there's a fourth command center done. There's a second factory. You know, he has started, but he delayed his upgrades. His 2-2 starting a long time. He committed pretty hard to this attack. And if he gets in and opens up an avenue, man, he will do a lot of damage. It's an old school timing, something Cyril doesn't get as much practice against anymore. These, these, it looks like a full macro build, but then he hits you with the odd two tank timing, catches you off guard. Maru with some fantastic play. Siege tank does get a good defense there. A few Marines go back to up defend the Ling run by. Maru does realize, of course, Cyril has a fourth base up top. The problem for Cyril is not that he's lost his base or drones, because he hasn't. He only lost one drone in the hatchery. It's the army that he lost defending the base. It's the 6,300 resources lost versus only 3,500. That's the problem. It's that marine tank position. That tank is not very flankable. He'll have to get lings through the minerals on the right side to get on the reverse of that tank. Otherwise, they will just get stuck. Good micro by Cyril to fix that. And he does get on top. Well done. Tank gets one more shot off. Oh my god, like 10 more banelings just died. Dude, Cyril's got to be so mad right now. He just lost so many banelings to that last tank shot, allowing the marines to redrop. Maru has zero chill right now. The man is playing like a savage. It's it, Oh man, he's in and he's out. He's up and he's down. And Cyril's tears are the things that are going to be collected in a flask tonight. A hatchery goes down. No cancel. He redrops the main. Forces all the queens there. Cyril ambush in the north. Ambush in the north. Watch out. Maru might be getting a bit ahead of himself, but he's still hot pickup. Saves most of those units. And now that he's into Widow Mine production, that's kind of nasty. Luckily, Cyril has Hydras. He's got an Overseer. He can clean those Widow Mines up. In the south, though, he has lost all map control, all creep. And Maru has a fifth. Maru has a fifth command center halfway built. His 2-2 upgrades are about in line with Cyril's, which is all right. Cyril desperately trying to start a fifth hatchery. Ghost Academy's on the way. A few more gases going down on the fourth. And concussive shells being remembered, of course. Three more barracks here. So heavy marauders will now be mixed in with the marines. Drop inside the main goes in. It goes out. Cyril, how do you claw your way back from here? He needs to respread creep. And he needs to hang on for dear life. Because he's down 8 workers, he's down 10 army supply. The upgrades are even right now. The Widow Mines mostly defused there, a lot of them not even firing. Great engagement here for Serral. Maru, gotta not get too far ahead of himself. Very hard to put Serral in the ground. This is a weird drop. It's a triple drop with 4 extra medevacs for healing. Maru getting a little bit chaotic in his organization, but that's enough marines to beat that many queens. Uh oh. Oh, one of the medevacs does go down. Queens, Lings, and Banes trying to fight this as best he can. Nice transfusers for Serral. Good defense for Serral. Ooh, a medevac with a lot of marines goes down. Yeah, Maru threw away a few medevacs there, but he's got a good attack on the north. The medevacs clumped up. Can the Banelings take him out? Good spready at the last second. The Banelings unable to take those out. Big Baneling hit. Uh, oh, sorry. Big Widow Mine hit on the Banelings is what I meant to say there. Hydras and Lings are getting forwards. One more Widow Mine fires, but not able to find the connection. Meanwhile, that redrop in the south. Four medevacs with four marines. Every medevac has their own personal healer. They are forced to pick up and pull back. Right now, the income tab. Sorry, guys. Wrong button is uh, pretty even. But of course, uh, the units lost tab is still in favor of Maru. It's actually turning in Serral's favor. Maru's got to chill. This is the thing. Same as game one. The bigger the fights get, the better Serral is at handling it. And the more he's closing the gap. It's making me think more than ever that if Maru is behind against Serral in the early game, he won't have any chance in the late mid game. Because this late mid game is where Serral seems to be pounding him. That being said, we saw in that last game, you get to the late game Ghost Lib army, and it turns around and flips on its head again, where Serral seems to have no idea how to deal with that army. He's on Mass Hydra. He's on 28 Hydralisks. Oh no. That's once again such a heavy Hydra army. I mean, I guess it's okay against the Mass Widow Mine Marauder. Just got to be careful as time goes on. Three Infestors, Burrow, two Vipers, all these important units on the way. Serral needs to find the money to get plus three Carapace, but he's starving right now for cash. 
Hatchery killed in the south, no cancel. Army in the north. Serral, a little slow to split his army up here. Those legs, he's gonna spread forwards. He does take five drones to one of those Widow Mines, but he cleans most of them up. In the south, the Queens and the rest of his army are ready to defend. Gonna go drop the main. You gotta be careful, there's Vipers out now. And they could start dropping parasitic bombs on these medevacs. This could be a big problem. If he overcommits like one parasitic bomb or one good fungal and Hydra's moving on top. Oh, oh, oh. The, the Widow Mines. The Widow Mines, though. The Widow Mines. He's so good with his scans. He always catches the infestors. Maru always knowing when there's infestors coming forwards. This man is a savage. He's got a spidey sense. You know, technically, you can see burrowed movements moving. There's like a tiny, tiny dust trail but it's nearly impossible to notice it. It's not as easy to notice as a cloaked unit. It's only when there's a lot of them moving next to each other that it's easy to spot, but Maru either has his eyeballs going for him or he's just got that game knowledge of when those infestors are gonna be hitting. Maru gets pushed back in the north though. He's still only behind, uh, ahead a few thousand resources the unit's lost. Serral is ahead in supply. Serral has a bit of creep control in the middle. He's got a bit of a chode there. He needs a bit more creep in the bottom. He's got one active tumor. Needs to spread some tumors up in the north as well. Uh, plus three carapace has not started. Serral's upgrades are frozen. Plus three carapace, plus two range is essential. You're on a mass Hydra army with only plus one attack. This is another reason why Hydras can be very awkward the longer the game goes. Maru's setting up for mass ghosts. He's got the fusion core, two more starports on the way. Plus two ship armor is on the way. Those Serral upgrades I talked about. Plus two, plus three are now starting. Lingbane Hydra comes in. Oh, I don't know about this one. He's coming from two sides. The big mistake he made last game was not coming from multiple sides. He's fixing that this time. Parasitic bombs on the Metavax. Unfortunately, the top left came in way behind the bottom right, and there was a planetary in that battle as well. That was not the angle he was looking for. That was a great fight for Maru, who's now 2,000 resources lost ahead. He needed to break these rocks and, and come in from like there, there, and the bottom left. But that bottom left army was fighting command centers and planetaries for half the time, and that was not the fight Sarah was looking for. He's got more infestors coming in. Looks like all of his infestors have been sniped this game. And Adrenal Glands has been forgotten, unfortunately. Hatchery down the south goes down. Hatchery in the north is uh, going to be allowed to build for now. Turret in the middle. Maru's slowing things down. He's realizing, let's just get to that strong point. Let's not force the issue. Because max out armies in the mid game are not my forte. Give me mass ghost lib, I'll do it. These medevacs. That's a death wish, that is. You guys ever been in a car where you can feel something in the bottom of the car, like thudding? I don't know if it's like a loose tire or something, but it's like thudding. Or like the engine's bouncing up and down and your, your friend tells you to get in. That's climbing into those red hit point medevacs. You don't know what the hell is going to happen, man. Fire is spreading forward. Ghost Lib Tardy scans and gets two infestors again. The infestors cannot find anything. Serral's going to come from two sides, but once again, not breaking down the rock. So his army's coming in piecemeal a little bit at a time, unable to get fully on top. It was a good idea, but until he breaks these rocks in the middle of this map, Solaris is not going to be a good space for Serral to fight. That was a good fungal. That was a good fungal. All right, overall, not a bad fight, but imagine if these rocks were broken. He has to get rid of these rocks. If he doesn't, I think he's in a pretty bad spot. Luckily, he gets two creep tumors down before the creep fully restreeds, so he can respread his chode or reseed his chode, I guess he, we should say. There is an infestor on that right side as well, but there's turrets everywhere, and he's going to go in turret range, I think. Research Ooh. complete. So remember, when you, get, when you see these guys move, watch for the dirt track next time I swap to Mara's vision. I'll point it out for you guys the next time we see a moving infestor. Oh, he's going to attack down the south as he surrounds a few ghosts. Nice move here for Serral. Well, that's slick. Very well done. Liberated ghost pushing him back. Command centers in the open. Could be some pickoffs. Those orbitals. Maru has mass orbital this time, guys. Or at least a few more that he's trying to get up. Baneling's going to take out the SCVs. Trying to repair that planetary. The ghost lib coming down. But there's Lingbane Hydra on the left side as well. Ready to come in and spring a trap. Oh, he's going to pull back. He's not going to not gonna attack any of this. Doesn't want to risk it. Finally breaking these rocks. Meanwhile, Command Center unable to land right now. You're in my seat! Serral's hatchery just sniggers at him and, and just is like, nah, bro. I'm, it's mine now. Ha ha ha. You went to the toilet. Still my favorite part of being a young boy. Like, I, I think the one thing missing as an adult man in my life that I never thought I'd miss is more fights between me and my friends over whose seat is whose seat. Like, that, that had to be peak... Growing up as a boy childhood is the constant chest beating over, no, that's my seat. 
It was fantastic. Seven SCVs do go down. The Bioghost Lib coming north. A few more SCVs going down in the, in the mineral line. Nice engage for Serral. Forces a scan out as well. Dude, Serral has had a terrible start. Two games in a row. He's making a real game out of this. He's only on 12 Hydras. And yet there's 13 Libs now. So he's actually bled out most of his Hydras. 23 have died. I do wonder if Corruptors is just the play here. Oh, Ling's running in. Man, these Ling run by his Maru keeps ending up on, on this, these awkward spots. SCVs, a few of them take damage, but he gets to the Planetary, and the Planetary will punish those Lings. Ain't no way you're taking out a Planetary with just 30 Zerglings. More Hydras are on the way. Serral, his income is way ahead, but having lost that Northern base, no doubt that income will be dropping. He's trying to take the Southern one. He needs to mine those middle bases to, to make this work, right? Widow Mine gets a decent little hit there. 7,000 resource lost advantage as Maru pulls back from the center of the map. He's got so many libs. I'm surprised we're not seeing lib harassment. Ship weapons comes in. We've already got plus three vehicle plating. Those libs are going to be much tankier with that. Ling Bay and Hydra there coming in. Widow Mine does take out a Hydra. He's going to try and kill some barracks. Oh, get away from those lib zones, bro. But leaving a few lings in the mineral line, usually a good idea. You can always run away at the last second if need be. Maru very cautious about how he moves here. You can see he's leaving a lot of ghosts down there. Another infest is going to go down without, of course, getting to do anything. And the bio does counterattack. Gets one of Serral's important hatcheries. The infester does get spotted, but he pops up. Neither player was watching. Serral reacted faster. Gets a double fungal on those units. They will heal up after taking 50 damage. In the north, we've got Ling still damaging here, chipping away. But Serral's inability to reestablish one of the middle bases is going to hurt him in the long run. Maru is slow and steady. He is the tortoise. And Serral is the hare. Serral is the one that needs to sprint to the finishing line because Maru's 10,000 resources more efficient. As long as Maru's got these two mining bases in the bottom, there's no pressure on him to take the middle bases. Leg Bane Hydra looking for it, but unable to find anything. Oof. 24 Hydras back in the mix. 50 Lings, 22 Banelings. It's going to go south. So Hydras could take out a few of these Libs. Oh, the Ling Bane's trying to stop the Ghosts, I guess. Those Hydras, they get caught by the Snipe, though. Bet pop up. Two, three, four Hydras go down. It's not it's not free, man. Even the good moves by Serral have to pay a price. Hatchery in the north gets sniped again. Maru picks up, pulls back to the Mineral Line. Baneling gets a hit there in the mineral line, but only damaging the units, not killing them. Hydras go back in on the south. They're going to go after these SCVs. Nice moves. It is only plus two range and still no adrenal glands either. Serral, uncharacteristic of him for getting those upgrades. That infester unburrowed, but didn't actually manage to kill those liberators. Another infestic dude. Guys, burrowed infestors aren't good anymore against Maru. Maru's the first player who's done this to burrowed infestors in the late game, I feel, where he is shut them down so hard on big spread out maps not just on the super cramped maps like solaris there's a lot of space to cover and yet he's just not letting the infestors do anything 11 liberators coming forward lots of marine marauder goes behind it ling bay and hydra attacking in a bit of an awkward spot a duck's trying to come in on those liberators he pulls a few of them out of siege mode but all the hydras are already dead oh my lord the ling bane did pretty well but there's no overseers left to finish off the ghosts that parasitic bomb gets massive damage. But that was a disaster. No microbial shroud that time around, and he got devastated. Maru getting a 2-0 in the Masters Coliseum Swiss stage and showing that he still got what it takes. Take that. All the hate is saying Maru washed up. He just needed a little bit of fuel, a bit of rest recovery time on his shoulder, and he's back. Watch this fight one more time, guys. Wow, how far back did that go? I don't know, here it is. Yeah, because the thing is, this these libs look like really exposed, and the front ones are. But I think it's it's just really scary to attack into a giant spread like this. So the Hydras don't have the range, man. No microbial shroud went down. His vipers were really far behind. Because remember, if you microbial shroud, that becomes 40 damage. It takes three shots rather than two to kill a Hydra. Which is pretty damn big, man. Microbial Shroud. Wait, wait. Vipers don't do Microbial Shroud, pig. Where's the Infester? Oh, there it is. Yeah, he could have Microbial Shrouded with this boy. But he might not have been on a control group. Yeah, he was. He could have done one Microbial Shroud in the middle. It would have helped. But yeah, the Vipers being late to the abducts. Because you want to abduct as many of these libs out of uh, siege mode as possible. He gets a few of them. 
And the Ling Bane does pretty well, but you can see he's kind of attacking around a corner as well into the ghosts. And anytime you're attacking around a corner, it's pretty bad. Kills a lot of the ghosts, a lot of the bio. But he just gets so wrecked on the Hydroverse Liberator front that it's like, ow. Oh, man. When, whenever a Terran gets into this sort of mass medevac, mass lib, mass viking, landing parasitic bombs is so big on those units, it's just very hard to actually do. Either way, GG well played, Maru is a beast. Thanks so much for watching. If you can spare an extra moment, please do me a favor. Click in the description below the video, click on the link to the Patreon page, and it'll take you right here. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel. Obviously, ad money only goes so far. And, uh, you know, it is something where basically the people who've been on the Patreon supporting and a big thanks to those who've been doing it for a while are a big part of what allows me to continue making all of this content. Doing my best to pump out videos daily for you at the moment. So please consider hopping on board if you can spare a few bucks and getting yourself some cool rewards while you're at it. Thank you very much. See you guys next time. Goodbye.